It's Friday, it's Straight Facts. Welcome back, everybody. I've uh, just literally five minutes ago got back into the door um, after spending the day yesterday with KJ, his beautiful wife, Kai, and his family. It was an amazing day, and KJ's putting out pictures and things now, and we'll share some on the community page for you as well. I'm joined, as ever, on Friday by the gruesome twosome. We've got man like Staffy with the fade looking slick, and then we've got man like Hussam, who... Honestly, that hair haircut, the 1970s, keep calling, saying, Hassan, give us that style back. Um, welcome, boys. How you doing? You both well? Hey, the woman ain't complaining, so I'm happy with my haircut. You get me? Um, big up to the Terrace audience. Make sure you guys are liking. Make sure you guys are subscribing. Um, you get me? Straight Facts is back. With I think we're going to get into quite a few debates today, so it's, it's going to be brilliant. Uh, congratulations to KJ, uh, you know. On behalf of myself and all the people who can't say it, congratulations to him uh, and his wife as well on the marriage. I I wish them nothing but happiness and 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 great times um, now and forever. And hopefully uh, their child becomes the next Kylian Mbappe and plays for Liverpool Football Club, future <laughs> Liverpool player. You know, I want to see what KJ does then. So yeah, big up and uh, let's let's do this. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, if a lot of people, yes, of course, lots of people sending in their congratulations. I'm sure KJ will see this all at some point as well. But uh, yeah, fantastic day yesterday. But football, football is is now is, is, is at the forefront of our minds. And it's a huge weekend. It's an absolutely huge weekend. Before we get into previewing the big game on Sunday, where Arsenal may end up, Spurs as well with some big words from Big Ange today. Does Zerbi to Manchester United? I know we've seen links with all and sundry from Mota to Gareth Southgate, but does Zerbi's a name, Staffy, that keeps coming up, that keeps being mentioned? But after what seems to be a, a, a less than satisfying year for non Brighton fans, nobody seems to want him anymore. Why is that? Um, obvious reasons, I think, at least. Um, they were doing well last year. They got into European competitions. And, uh, you know, there's always there's always one or two managers every season where everyone thinks they're the next big thing. Um, everyone is hop, hop, hopping on, on that bandwagon. And uh, Deserby was that last year. This year, obviously, he's not as... as um, how do I say this? He's not that... It's not sparking he's not anymore. anymore he's, basically. Yeah, he's, he's just not standing out anymore. He's just doing a basic job. He's just doing a basic job as a manager, which doesn't mean that it's bad, by the way, when I say basic. But people love things that are shiny and everyone wants it because they want to just flock over and try to get it themselves. But he's just having a regular season. And to be honest, that's what he should have been going through anyways. You know, he's at a club where they sell their best players every year. There's always an instability uh, instability in that team anyways when you play for Brighton you're selling about three four players every summer most likely your best players like Caicedo, McAllister and whoever else they sold last summer so listen the results being shaky is very I mean I, I think it's very predictable in my opinion um, you know when he's conceding a lot of goals and not getting a lot of clean sheets I don't know what people expected him to do this year maybe go into the top four or something I'm sorry if that was your expectation he was never going to do that uh, but when they're seeing the performances just being eh, basic, bland, no one wants him anymore. So um, it's I, I think it's normal what he's going through this year and a team like this. But, you know, he's not as, as I said, he's not as attractive anymore to, to, to the people's eyes. Yeah, that, that's what I think it is. I, I don't think when, when you, when you I'm not, I know you weren't using your words, you, you expression what other people say. Brighton's football isn't bland all of a sudden, but obviously his style is being looked at tacticians and other clubs are looking for its weaknesses. He has a very limited squad in terms of how many of their players do you really want at your club? And most of the players that we all looked at and said, I love him at my team, got sold last year. If you literally took the best two midfielders away from any member of the top six, current top six, traditional top six, whichever, would they be this? Imagine you took Rodri and Bernardo, uh, Rodri and KDB <laughs> out of Man City. Imagine you take Declan Rice and Odegaard out of Arsenal and then expect them to be even better the following season. It's such a ridiculous notion to me. And I think you're right. There is 
for a lot of football fans, fashion is such an important thing. What's the most fashionable opinion to have? Most fashionable boots to wear? What's the most... You know, I'm even seeing football fans now say things like, who actually invented the rule where you can only support one team? So, no, it's, it's it's an unwritten rule, but it's a rule. like it, And it's got to stay. But well, I don't see it. I'm going to... It's fashionable to support more than one team. So I want to be part of that group. And do I think the Zerbi is the guy that's going to win his Champions Leagues and Premier Leagues? I'm not convinced by that. But depending on where Man United are and who says yes to us and who says no to us, he has to be on that list. For me, he has to be on the list of options. And do I think he'll be a terrible option? No, I, I think people are... The fact is, is, it's their first ever time in Europe. I know they got smashed last night, which it isn't going to help. But I think there's been... As much as there was an overreaction last year to people saying he's the next Pep, there's an overreaction this year to people saying he's dead in a bum. I think it's crazy, crazy. I, I, don't like, I agree. Um, he's he's not a. St- before we go to Hassan, obviously, I just don't. I don't. I don't think there's a standout candidate this year when it comes to all managers. So it's very easy to have divided opinions because you can argue that two years ago or whenever it was when we got Ten Hag, he was a clear standout. It was him and Poch, and it's, he stood out massively because everyone saw what he did at Ajax. Everyone thought he can come to a big European club or a uh, top five league and, and and convert what he did there into these leagues this is why at the time there was stronger candidates like him right now when you really look around because of the availability as well i'm not saying there's not good managers i'm talking about managers being available there's not a mm. lot of options out there and everyone is pretty much and i think i said this on the top six one time it's like one of these managers has to hit and someone left them you know like, but it is true like managers the minute they make big moves about four of them fail, but the fifth one hits. That's just how football it is, uh, has been. So mm. the Zerbi is going to go through the same thing. He's not doing anything outstanding in terms of winning stuff and you know going toe-to-toe with Liverpool and City and them. That's why he's not standing out. But who else is standing out? There's no one else out there in, a, in, in Europe that's such a standout where everyone is pointing at him like, I need a manager, well, let me go get him. Yeah, there's a, there's a question mark over every manager. We're not getting Alonso, so that's it gets out the question. Uh, Zidane doesn't want to come to England. Almiron's only done it in Portugal. So when you start going through the list of managers, there is a, there, and this is the, the problem with Man United being linked to anybody because there isn't a Pep or a Klopp who are universally respected as world-class and, av- and available. There's always going to be some conjecture. I just think with some Man United fans, they're allowing their personal preferences to cloud what Man United need. And we actually, we're, we're so far in the mud and there is so much damage to undo Man United fans have got to prepare themselves in and be patient. Now, that doesn't mean if you bring in a manager and he fouls and you're sitting 11th and you're playing awful football, you couldn't change him quickly. But I still think it's going to take a manager or two to get us back to the very best version that Man United could be. We could get lucky and bring in a guy that within two to three years is doing what Arteta is doing now. But you were going to see the bumps in the road still. There might be better looking football. We're still going to get bad results. I think there are some Man United fans that are so delusional. They think new owners, new manager, new sporting director, next year will be back. And, and some of them, I think, are dumb enough to think that's going to happen. And there are others who know it isn't going to happen, but they're setting that standard so they can be angry about not reaching it next year. It's it's so textbook. It's unbelievable. And I think they're attacking every managerial candidate. It's almost like they're not backing any so that they can just be angry for the sake of being angry. It's, it's, it's really frustrating. I don't know what you think as an outsider looking in, uh, Hassan. You know what Deserve reminds me of? This is what he reminds me of. Deserve reminds me of dip, dipping dots. That's what he reminds me of. What's a dipping like- dot? That's you know you know what it is. It's like when you first try it, it's like oh this is so cool. Like this that the dipping dots was the shit in two thousand six. You know it's like ice cream and like circular small version that just melts in your mouth. It just feels it, it's just incredible. It was so cool in two thousand six. Unfortunately, it's twenty twenty four now. You get me, and people have just moved on. Thing is, Deserve was just the hipster favorite last season. This is the reality. Uh, this is the reality whether people like to accept it or not. Last season, everyone had kissed. You know what's, uh, you know what you get me deserve it the whole year. You know they were just was like, deserve is so unbelievable. Oh my god, deserve plays beautiful football. This is like the next hipster hippie manager that everyone loves and wants at their club after their manager leaves and shit like that. Listen, deserve has been exposed this season and rightfully so. Because when you have expectations on you, that's when you really get exposed. Ten Hag was the deserve. Think about it. 
Ten Hag was supposed to be the next big thing before he came to Man United. He was supposed to be, you know, the next man up, shit like that. Graham Potter was supposed to be the next man up. You could keep going on and on and on and on with all these managers who haven't really had massive successes elsewhere, but they play, quote-unquote, beautiful, sustainable football type thing. I think Man United are a mess right now. Uh, they're a massive mess. Jim Ratcliffe has a lot of work on, the, on his hand. Man United fans' standards should be lowered by definition, not because they should have low standards, but because you obviously they're in a building stage, so mm. they need a bit less. Um, and I think right now, the only way Man United is fixed is if Ratcliffe makes a series of correct decisions upstairs before making a correct decision downstairs. I've seen crazy links. I think if Man United gets Gareth Southgate, they're better off sticking with Ten Hag. I'm actually being that serious. I think if, if they're, they're going to get Deserbi, they're better off sticking with Ten Hag. Like, obviously, Terry mentioned something that's true. Obviously, you can't get Klopp Pep. Obviously, you can't get Ancelotti. We, you can't get Zidane. We know that. But there's there's something called a little bit of a, like a tier below. Maybe Inzaghi from Inter Milan. Like, Inzaghi from Inter Milan. That's a good shout, you know? Mm. Maybe someone I think like Inzaghi is a tier below. Like, yeah, yeah, I think he's a tier below. Inzaghi. I actually yeah, Inzaghi. Think, I, I actually want Inzaghi, but I don't think we could get him because he's too good. Tier below. You think who? he's a t- well depends on who you're talking about. He's you no, tell I'm me who's he... Klopp, Pep. I'm saying he's a tier below Klopp and Pep. Okay, if that's that's what you're trying to say. Yeah. No, I would not, I'm but, not saying he's a tier below Ten Hag. That's what I'm saying. You should accept I thought you said he's that. a tier below the Zerbi. And I was like, what? No, 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 no. I'm saying tier below Klopp and Pep is what you should aim for. Deserve is not the tier below. Deserve is the tier below below. That's the, the, the reality. So I think right now, getting a manager in and pretending that it's going to fix everything is just insane. It's the same shit with Chelsea, but your problems are way less than Chelsea's problems. You just can't just get a manager in and suddenly, oh, Man United are great again. It's just not how life works. So there needs to be a series of correct decisions. And the one thing I'll say now, and I'm, I'm going to make it clear right now, how I will see Man United actually being successful over the next three, four years is if they sign no superstars. They should have a no superstar rule and they should have a no... No, no, I'm telling you right now, they should have a no big transfer record rule. For the next two years, they should sign players on on the... on Just, just about to turn world class. Like Mane Southampton, like Salah Roma, like that type of signing, you know, where you're just... He's a step away from taking that mm. next step. I'm not saying sign kids. I'm not saying sign do a Chelsea. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying sign a... No, I, I, under, I understand. Player. I understand. I, yes. I, I, I hear what you're saying. I wouldn't necessarily go with a, a rule where I'm like, okay, no superstars. Because you never know who becomes available. You know what I'm saying? Like, all of a sudden, if a superstar in whatever team becomes available and they're going to sell, I'm not going to sit here and be like, you know what? Well, Sam told me on straight facts. Yeah. For us to rebuild. Let's not get superstars. So let's and when you sign 36 year old Harry Kane and he scores five goals, no, no, but that's see. not, but, 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 okay, but that's not what I'm saying. I, I'm agreeing but that's the somewhat with what you're saying over the last 10 years. Am I lying? Falcao, okay, but, Di Maria, but, but, Ogba, Lukaku. Okay, so hear me out. When you look at some of the players recently that have moved, like Jude Bellingham as an example, I think Jude Bellingham wasn't a superstar in terms of what he achieved yet when he went to Dortmund to Madrid. But everyone knew that's the move that's going to make him, all right, now he's going to become world-class. Now he's going to become a superstar because everyone could see he's so good on the pitch. Just put him in a bigger team with better players, and there you go. That's what it is. I think you go through situations like that, like Camavinga a few years ago when he went to Madrid, Chouameni, these types of signings. You don't shy away from these these signings because you know these go- these players are on the verge of being world-class just because you're going through... A hundred percent, they are. You, you don't think Camavinga and Chouameni? No, they're not. Camavinga wasn't a superstar in France. Chouameni wasn't a superstar in France. Camavinga, Camavinga wasn't was, a superstar in Dortmund. Camavinga was told at the time he's the next. You partner. disagreed with me, and then you said exactly what I said. So, I said no, no, but you you compared it to Kane as, at thirty six as an example. That I agree with. I don't want to bring in another Zlatan as an example. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm yeah, not trying to sign players. About. I'm talking about the, the, that's the rule. I'm saying your rule should be don't sign. Superstar, uh, Staffy, when I say superstar, I don't mean a 21-year-old who's ready to make the next step. That's not what I mean. I'm, I'm, I want you to sign, if you want to be successful, you should want to sign the players that are just one step away. That's not what I mean. Okay, so I'm you're talking saying, about superstars. I'm the Falcaos and the Di Marias of the world. That I can me? hear. That right. I can hear, yes. But but if, if there's players that are superstars at a young age that are about to make that move to become a world-class player in a world-class club, I wouldn't say no to that because I do agree with you that we need to rebuild. I don't want to paper over cracks anymore. And I don't think Ineos is going to do that. I think Ineos are too intelligent to do that. 
Mm. But I'm not going to sit here and say, let's not spend money yeah. forever because we failed at it before. That's not really a, 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 a way for me to judge the future. Yeah. Logically, I get where you're coming from, Hassan. I don't think it needs to be a blanket policy. Because I actually think Chelsea's policy of not signing too many players, like signing young players makes sense. But not when there's somebody that's 26 who should be in your team. You've got to get the balance right. So I don't think it should ever be a, a blanket. Because it's not about them being a superstar. It's about do they really want to be here? The problem is yes. with a lot of the players we signed, when we when they've done their stories afterwards, Alexis Sanchez is a great example. He signed, and after two training sessions, he, he admitted, he went, I realized I made a big mistake. I didn't really want to be there for one reason or another. We have done that far too many times in the last decade where we're signing people. Di Maria didn't want to come to Manchester United yeah. as an example. I think there's a number of these players we've signed who in their heart of hearts probably regretted it, but the amount of money we paid them, the image rights we gave them, they couldn't, they almost, they got blinded by it. We need to make sure people are coming in for the absolute right reasons. And it's funnily enough, the first year of Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, that we turned down a few people. Dabala was one of them and, and others because the club didn't, well, Oli was involved in the meeting and said they weren't asking enough questions about the football. They're asking more about compensation and money and image rights and they moved away from it. The problem is we don't stick to that strategy. We've, we've better quality people for long enough and that's what we need to do so i get where you're coming from i don't want to sign a wash super i don't want to sign some 35 year old from uh bayern munich whose legs have gone that bayern munich are happy to sell but if we could this summer sign frankie de jong and shua many i wouldn't be saying no if they really wanted to be at the football club if that makes no, sense I, so, I i agree with that i agree with that no, that's not, comes in, it means to I'm about, I, don't want I agree with you yeah. I think the, the did you see by the way speaking of Ali did you see that uh, the club refused to sign Haaland for like 20 million or something yeah. I, oh, I hope you guys team enjoyed team. watching that There's interview so, I know it's so many it's calls. crazy this is how you know you've fallen off Arsenal Football Club we went for a period didn't we where all the stars the Zlatans the Yaya's the Ronaldo's there's always a story that came out Mbappe where Wenger could have signed them but didn't Loads, and I think it for years it's wound Arsenal fans up that they missed out the team they could have had during that period. Ronaldo, imagine Yaya, Ronaldo, Zlatan, all in the same team in their Kante pump. was another one. And uh, yeah, all of them, right? Man United have become that team. There's been so many stories in the past decade of players that we could have signed early and for cheap. That Bellingham. Be, uh, yeah, that we, we, uh, Bellingham was a little different. Bellingham didn't want to go to Man United. His first choice, he wanted to go to Dortmund. And from it's what he wanted to do. And I think that's one where I don't mind that. I don't mind if somebody's like, well, that we, they tried to get me, but he chose something else. Because you, you always get, re everybody gets rejected. But with Haaland, we just said, no, we, basically they said, no, we read the scouting reports. We don't rate him. So I said, no, no, you know what's crazy, Terry, too, when I heard that? Just try to think of it this way. Ollie recommended a player that he's personally managing and coaching every day. They said no. To me, that shows that we don't trust what you're saying. But then, what, six months later, a year later, <laughs> we job. trusted you for a job. <laughs> it's like <laughs> you were saying, yo, Safi, I want you to do straight facts every Friday. I'm like, all right, so Terry rates me. But then I'm like, yo, Terry, this guy, I know he's a great panelist. Maybe you should the top six. You're like, nah, nah I don't trust you. How? <laughs> you trusted no, me with a job, but you didn't trust my recommendation. It's just yeah. crazy how this club works. No, mate, I hear you. Another, another name was thrown there, Caicedo. Yeah, Ralph said to the club, go get Caicedo. I think Ralph Ragnick said, go get him now for like two million quid. We didn't do it. He, he was sold for 100 odd million in the summer. And it's just, it, it, that, that's. I mean, I know he hasn't had a good season at Chelsea and we haven't been run well enough. We may not have developed these young players because of how we're run, but the, say, it's, but the all the little factors that don't work at this club is crazy. Uh, if Ineos appoint Southgate, Potter, Tuchel, are you going to be deluded and claim they are fixing United, Terry? Well, I'm going to be... It's a good question. A I, will good be question. Skeptical. I will be sceptical. I'll be sceptical. And what I'm not going to do during this rebuild is just agree with every single decision that's being made in real time because I'm trusting the process. I will criticise... If we bring in Southgate, and I think oh, I'm going to criticise that if it happens... <laughs> But what I'm going to do is remain objective. I pray to God, please. Yeah, I'll remain objective in the sense of I don't think it's going to work. But if it does work and we start getting better and we start improving, then I'll say as a man, I was wrong and we've got better. 
the problem that I have about this is the one fear factor I have around this rebuild is that Man United fans are not going to keep their powder dry and they're not going to give it time to cook. And what I mean by that is sometimes don't show your ass too early, even if you're like, oh, I'm not sure about Amarin. Keep quiet. Maybe keep quiet. I get Southgate because no one rates him. But if it's a manager like an Amarin, Zerbi, some moth, somebody from that we're not as familiar with here as you know, maybe we are with Zerbi. They're not as familiar. Just keep quiet and let's see what happens. Don't big it up too much. Equally, don't go around shitting on it and giving fuel to the rivals just for once. Karma, just karma with it. But yeah, look, I'm not gonna. I'm equally not gonna say they've they've ruined the club already. I'm gonna wait and see what happens. But if it's any one of those three managers. I will be highly skeptical and I will criticize it in real time. But as you all know, I consider myself to be a real man. And that me, in, in being a real man, if I end up being wrong, I'll admit I was wrong. Simple as that. But you do know they're going to get criticized uh, criticized by someone anyways. Man. Regardless, yes, yes, like yes. 100% they're going to get criticized. Because I'll tell you what, Omar Barada's example, he had the Zerbi on his list for potential replacements to if slash when Pep leaves. Now, if City have him on his report, people are going to be like, oh, my God, look at them. They're, they're ahead of the curve. They know what they're doing. But then if we hire him, let's say Omar Barreto recommends him. He's like, listen, according to what the work that we did at City, we really thought he is the most suitable replacement to Pep. And since now I'm no longer there, yeah. let's get him here. Yeah. They're going to be like, oh, look, you, you know, they are just going for a yeah. hipster, blah, blah, blah. Do you guys in America and, 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 and uh, Jordan, do you have a show called Deal or No Deal? Yeah. You have that we show in Jordan? Have, or do you... You, you know what the deal is, yeah. So it's a really interesting game where it was an Arab one, Hussein. It was by Nicole Seba or someone like that. Okay. Yeah, they have a one the, on Yeah, the way the way it basically works is like the game and, and its premise changes based on the deal you may do halfway through the game. So when you play the game to begin with, you want to avoid all the big numbers. But say halfway through you do a deal for 20 grand, you then want to get all the big numbers because you want a small one in your box because then your deal was worth it. And I feel like there's a similar bit of mental gymnastics that goes on with players and managers linked to Man United. If Man United get a manager, people will look, then look for all the potential negatives and go bad, bad, bad for all these reasons. If certain other clubs get that manager, it's, well, let's look at all the positive parts of the CV, all the positive records they've got, and let's wax lyrical about why it's going to be so amazing. The problem that we have is that, that most managers have that question mark over them. But because we've been so poorly run as an institution, all the negative things that have been said about every manager and every play we've signed have come to fruition because there isn't, hasn't been the breeding ground. There hasn't been the structure in place to enhance them. That is why, although I wouldn't agree to Tuchel, I wouldn't agree to Potter, I wouldn't agree to Southgate. If they were to be the individuals, I would criticize it, but remain open-minded to see if a structure around those managers improved us. Equally, we also have to understand who has turned us down. So I don't want, like the Derby is not my top choice. But if we go for Simeone and he says no, we go to Zidane and he says no, we ask Almerin, he says no, Alonso says no, Motta says no, you get to a point where, well, we're going to have to have somebody. And if we can't attract the better managers, I, I actually quite like Inzaghi uh, into Milan. So I, again, I'm not closed minded to, to these managers because that may be the situation that we're bloody in. You know, these managers might look at it and go, well, I've got offers from Liverpool. Or I'm currently at Inter. I've got, you know, Deserby might sit there and go, City are genuinely sniffing around me. I don't want to become the Man United manager because then I have no chance of ever becoming the City manager. Alonso, I think he's getting Liverpool, even though Bayern seems to be winning the race. Alonso, even if Klopp was staying, wouldn't join Man United because he's, he might have ambitions of managing Liverpool one day. And if he does, you don't get to manage both. So I, I think Man United fans have got to, Stop being so emotional about these decisions for a moment. Look at them logically and understand that we've all got a wish and a want list. But this isn't Christmas. You're not going to be. It's not like shouting at your parents because they got you the wrong games console or the wrong color shoes. This is. There may be legitimate reasons. The fact that we've been awful for a decade as to why we can't even attract our number one, number two, number three targets. And the club, by the way shouldn't make it public who, who our, our main guy is. Do you know why? Because if you miss... Look what happened to Spurs when they ended up getting Nuno in. Nuno fouled because I swear he was like the 13th person off the job to. How is he ever going to be able to control a dressing room when they knew when they knew he was 13th choice? <laughs> you walk in... Like, imagine you went to a new job tomorrow as the, as the manager, uh, uh, Staffy or Sam, and all the staff know that they... That, that, 
30, 12 other people rejected that job before you. You wasn't they're the main gonna, candidate. Yeah, yeah. They're not, gonna have, they're not gonna have respect for you. So Man United fans have got to try and help control this narrative to help the football club. It's very important to help the football club through this period because we want to get better, right? And lying and bullshitting and being emotional on Twitter about this particular area isn't going to help, in my humble opinion. But that's just. By me. the way, what, since we're on this topic, Terry, I know you you want to move on. I just wanted to, to to give my opinion on this. I've actually came to a conclusion that I think Inzaghi is the most suitable replacement uh, for Ten Hag if we get rid of him. I think Hossam described him as a manager who's a, 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 a below tier, just one tier below Pep and um, and Klopp. And I don't think that's by any means is that an insult because you just said he's just... It's like players who were world-class, but they're not Ronaldo Messi of the last 15 years. That's not really yeah. an insult. They were just aliens. So I do hear that. I'm looking at him, and I think he's the perfect replacement um, for what he's done at Inter. For who he is as a manager, and I think if you give him the financial capabilities at Manchester United that he lacks in Inter Milan, he would absolutely succeed. So, um, mm. I I like it. I, I like the football that Inter Milan play. Again, since I've been interested in him, I've gone and read and watched a lot more. I think there's a good progressive style. There's someone that's very organised. It's an again, it's someone who's not wet behind the ears at that level like a De Zerbi, who's never, I, I don't know how many, you know, he hasn't looked after a big team in the Champions League or anything. He isn't a Pep or a Klopp at this stage of his career. He's kind of that in-between. And I think that's, I look at that. I mean, Alonso is my personal number one choice, but obviously I'm not going to get angry about it because I know there's almost zero chance of getting him. So I have to move on from that. Do you know what I mean? It's like my wife of choice is Michelle Keegan, but she's already married and I'm not good looking enough or rich enough. So I can't, Hanker on that, do you know what I'm saying? I might get lucky, but I doubt it. If you're watching Keegan, always available for you. Always <laughs> uh, do us a favor, by the way, people. Um, hit the like button and subscribe. Make sure you are checking out my new channel, The Squad. The QR code is right there. Brand new podcast coming soon, it's going to be amazing. So go and get yourself subscribed. Uh, Thanos series of City fans is a clickbait title again. This league had uh, been our ground. For the last decade, 3-1 versus Liverpool will slap them. Well, it's not a clickbait title. It's an opinion that one of the panel members holds. That's that's the people have got to stop using this word clickbait out of context. If a Sam thinks, this is hypothetical, that Man United are gonna smash Everton and the title says United to destroy Everton, that's not clickbait, it's an opinion. City out of the title race is in this uh is is in this title. Wait till we get to the section and you'll understand why it's part of the title. You s Thanks for the super chat, but stop being a man child and calm yourself down. It's literally an opinion that's in the show. Thus, not clickbait. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It, 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 madness, madness, absolute madness. Um, speaking of this weekend, moving on from the, the, the managerial conversations. Actually, we have a few more super chats on it. I will finish them, actually. Uh, issue with Deserby uh, to Man United. Issue with Deserby to Man United and Deserby to City is City already has the structure in place. This is true. This is true. This is true. But at the same time, you could recognize Deserby's failures. I mean, losing 4 0 to Roma in the Europa League ain't really the best thing. Currently, they sit where? Like 9th, 10th? Mm. That's what you expect yeah, Brighton to be. Anyway. Yeah, it's not. Again, if you'd, if he'd won 3 0 away from home last night, the credentials would suddenly be, be, be shooting up. But yeah, it doesn't look particularly yeah, great. Yeah, if Brighton were like in fifth place, sixth place, overachieving, fair. But for their ninth, tenth, where they're at right now, like, no, nothing special. Uh, Terry, if Ten Hag is sacked and no manager in before midsummer, how comfortable uh, are you with the CEO and director of football purchasing, selling players? Doesn't any elite manager want to be at least consulted? Well, uh, the club should be signing and buying players anyway. Whenever you hire a head coach or a manager, whatever title you want to give them, there should be a very, very close, uh, closely aligned view of football, the philosophy and the understanding. Therefore, you are signing players for the club, but they're players that the manager you're hiring is going to be able to get the best out of because you've, you're all joined up. You're all pulling in the same direction. And the expression I would use is singing off the same hymn sheet. If you're signing players that are typically going to play a really nice, that they're suited for really nice, fast-paced, high-pressing, progressive football, but you then bring in a manager who is famed for a slow-paced, low-block, sort of uh, 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 sort of slow-paced counter-attack style of football, then you're messing up. 
So yeah, it doesn't bother me in any way, shape or form. It shouldn't be manager signings per se. It should be club signings every single day of the week. Uh, even if we played paid the refs against Forest, what are the chances we score in the 99th minute uh, when Hassam is unconfident, I'm confident uh, for a win. Yeah, there was a lot of accusations of cheating last week, weren't there? And the the, the, the drop ball and everything. What did, what did you make it out of, Sam? Yeah, bro, we, we won that game fair and square, honestly. Konate got fly kick to the face. The guy's lucky to not get sent off. Like, it's just, it's just let's, let's, let's not even go there. If I pull up the image, you would all be disgraced to think that Liverpool literally cheated last week. Liverpool did not cheat. Funnily enough, it's actually been the Arsenal fans crying more than anything. This is the tackle that these frauds are complaining about. This is the tackle right here. Look, this is this is this is the drop ball they're complaining about. Did he Yates actually touch him? Had, did he, did he, did he touch him? So far down Konate's uh, eye, it could have been like in his did he, ear. Did he touch? Did he touch him though? What? Did he? Did he actually make contact? Because like what, what, what I'm saying is, when you is my hand on my face or not? Am I touching my face right now? No, it's not touching your face. Am I touching my face now? Yes. No, I'm not. <laughs> yes, see, you are. If I, no, if I, I'm not gonna. If I turn now, you'll see I ain't touching my face. See. There you are. There you are. Same. You see, depending. But, but, on, you know, but you know, he's touching. Depending his upon hand. the angle. Depending upon the angle. No, he's not. He didn't touch him because they showed a different angle. What are you yeah, that game, we, we listen. Liverpool should have the penalty as well, and we scored in the 99th minute. You get me? You guys can blame Forrest for missing that. Hang on a minute. I was like, Sam, you know when people do that thing, like when they hold their hand out and the Eiffel Tower's in it, in a picture, you know the Eiffel Tower's not really in their hand, right? <laughs> yeah, I know that. Perspective. Yes. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. I'm going to quote Stava. I'm going to educate you a minute here. I'm going to educate you. Oh, <laughs> here <laughs> it's here here you a new word. Perspective. Yeah. Come on. We did. We did not cheat against nothing. I didn't much. say you cheated. Did. The referee made a mistake, though. Surely, no, if no, it was the no. other way around, if if it happens this weekend against C, what are you just going to accept it or are you going to moan? No, I'm not going to accept it if it's in the biggest game of the season. Ah. No, I'm not going to accept. See it. this guy, bro. This is the issue with you. You call it out when it's convenient to you only. This is when you come out and you're like, oh, you the issue with you. You not managing and hug, and now you want the guy sacked. That's the issue with you. You are you are well, that an the issue. Fan. Now see you what you just did. Fall. See what you just did. Deflect. See there you are. There you you are. do you this every week. First season, a bigger you success do... than Arteta, and now look at you. Now look at you. One ten hag. Get ten hag out. You're my such club. a deflector. You're such you a get deflector. Ten hag out everyone sees club. through you. Everyone sees through you. The minute I I I put you in a in an uncomfortable situation, you said Garnacho is not fat. What are you watching? What is that again? What does that have to do with with you calling out referees only when it's convenient to you? Okay, people. Okay, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just put this to bed right here, right now. Stop referring to the Liverpool Spurs game, which had the biggest VAR embarrassment since VAR existed, where they have given an onside goal as an offside one, and then thought that the on-field referee gave it as on onside. But that cannot be compared. Hang on, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. It, no, it can be compared because the fourth official radioed to the referee and said, you've got to give the ball back to Nottingham Forest. The referee has admitted he heard that being said, give the ball back to Nottingham Forest, and he had a brain fart and gave it to Liverpool. That is equally as bad as a miscommunication that led to Arsenal's lines not being drawn and the miscommunication that led to an offside goal being ruled out. It's, 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 in my opinion, there are identical mistakes in the sense of the right, the wrong thing was miscommunicated or heard. There was poor communication within it, and a referee or whoever it was in charge panicked for a moment. They still, by the way, could have. I still don't understand why the fourth official didn't walk onto the pitch and just go stop. They're meant to have the ball. That's what he should have done. But yeah, it, it's it's funny to me. Listen, I still think they could have cleared the ball. I still think it's a little bit of a stretch, but it was a bad mistake. And if it happens to Liverpool, you guys would be having debates in Parliament about it. A hundred percent. And 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 you know what's also a crazy mistake? The fact that Hudson and Oi tried to dribble, dribble it out of play in the 98th minute, uh, and which caused the Liverpool goal. That that mm. did not directly affect the result of the game. It's completely different to a, to a on to a goal actually not being given and Jota mm. getting sent off when he shouldn't have been sent off. Those are completely... Jota, and by Jota, the way, Liverpool Jota, have had Jota. Liverpool. Let's get something clear. Out of the big six sides, Liverpool have had the most PGMOL apologies 
And if VAR decisions went our way, we'd be four points better off right now. So well, just, just because you get the apology doesn't mean you've been the most... Man United have had some terrible ones this year that they still are claiming were right. The Rodri Paul in the first Manchester derby, as an example, the offside goal that uh, Crystal Palace scored against us. We haven't... They haven't even admitted they were wrong. Even though the they've apologized was, to other people the for the same thing. The Rashford goal when the ball oh, went, the they said the ball went out and it didn't actually go out. Exactly. Didn't we've had three, we've had, and that's why those stats, and this is not a dig at Liverpool actually, those things that say this club had the most apology or this club had the most wrong calls against them, that's only the wrong calls they've admitted to. What about when they don't even admit there's been a mistake because it isn't high profile enough? Those, those tables are absolutely out of whack. They're out of whack. All I, of them. I, I agree with you. I think Wolves have been done the dirtiest this season in terms of PJ Moen. Oh, the only Wolves. apologies to Liverpool to Moen is because, because club. No, nah, Wolves, right. Wolves, 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 Wolves got two done penalties done. against them. Two penalties against them, two weeks running for the same thing. And twice the referee made mistakes on it. And I know that Liverpool, the, the drop ball thing happened in the other direction, but you're not listening to what I'm saying. If that happened in the first half and Forrest went and scored, Liverpool fans would be outraged. So that's not. Act like we. This is the one thing I will say to Liverpool fans. I stood right next to you, shoulder to shoulder, when you were robbed against Spurs. Shoulder, and I stand by it, and I will do it again. I am not going to stand there and listen to your bullshit when you benefit from a poor referee mistake. I thought, and every Liverpool fan said this to me at the time. Oh, Terry, it's so good to see a rival stand up for us in this circumstance. So now you've got to do the same thing. You benefited from a mistake. You can still call out the mistake and celebrate the win. Stop being hypocrites. Come on now. I'm Liverpool not, fans... Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Not you. I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to the viewers. Listen, okay. Liverpool fans, Liverpool Football Club, too much heritage, too much class to behave like that, in my opinion. Only. You're a hypocrite, by the way. Terry won't say it, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure. Terry is so shy of calling me a hypocrite. You know, no, no, he has, has to stay, stay down the middle. Stuff. I won't stay down go the middle. Watch Staffy, just... Go watch Staffy TV from last season compared to now. You'll see who has flip-flopped more. Me or who was the football from last season to this season? That's, there you go. Exactly. So when you watch my streams, exactly. make sure you put the games exactly. next to it. So when you see the tone changes, you're going to see the football changes as well. Exactly. By the way, so by on. your logic about uh, Callum hudson Adoy that he should have cleared it, I could have just said, you know what, Matip should have never scored that own goal. There you go. We wouldn't worry about that if you didn't score an own goal. I tell you what's But you did you, Sam. All summer, you're like, we haven't done enough in the transfer market. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. You're now top of the league. And you ain't sitting there going, I was wrong. That's a good caller. Yeah. Sorry, to, sorry, FSG. What have you? The, yeah, the, the, the the have we won the Can't league? hear the apology, Sam. Have we, have we won the league? It's so you wouldn't even challenge. You're wrong. No, I said we'll challenge. Don't put, now you're no. lying. Now you're wrong. Lying. Wrong. Uh, Terry, allow me to lie. Where's the end of apology? Lies. I don't lie. Where's the end of apology? Did you apologize? I said, to I, said I, I said we're gonna win. I said we're gonna challenge for the league. Did you apologize the end of yet? Because he's been one of the best. I said DMs. this this Terry fraud has me on straight facts all summer long last summer when I was saying uh, when I was saying it's gonna be Arsenal City and Liverpool title race, and now he's saying I never said we're gonna challenge. Mm. You said Arsenal, you said Arsenal winning the league, and then you said City were coming yes. second. I think you put uh, Liverpool third. You very yeah, and I said it's gonna be a three way title, title races. Now you said the midfield's not strong enough, we didn't buy a DM, we messed up yeah, again and that's the challenge. Ra, 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 ra. You did it loads. I said You're challenge. so angry. The amount of rolling of the R's in that, when we were talking, it was a madness, bruv. Sounded like I was I at said, Formula I One. I said, I said the challenge. I said the challenge. This, no, I've already, already, already messed with my bro. Uh, this is a didn't Nanglesman reject Chelsea uh, because they wanted to buy players with no consultation? Yes, but that's but that's fine. And that's that, that's the right thing to do in that circumstance because the what Chelsea told Nagelsmann they were going to do, Nagelsmann looked at it and said, well, that's not going to work for me because the styles of football and what they were trying to achieve was so different from one another. But if Nagelsmann was going to have players bought for him, that he, if he looks at their list of players and how they want to play football and it was a perfect match, then he would have taken the job. And that's also where a lot of managers go wrong. A lot of managers do this thing that a lot of men and women do in relationships. I really like her. If I could just change those two or three things about her. I really like him. If I could just change those few things about him, it'll be perfect. Can't change people. Managers do it all the time. They they go into, I think they go into these situations and go, oh, and I'm not going to get this and that. But I reckon once I'm in there, I can change it. And they're, they're joining a situation that's, you know, it's, it's like mixing oil and water from the beginning. It's, it, Nagas has done the right thing there. So many women said that about me, and now they're single and miserable. Life, life yeah. happens, man. And uh, this is, uh, but Terry, the same thing happened in the first half to Liverpool. Liverpool did not concede a goal 
after the referee made a mistake in the first half. Not the same thing. Yeah, and we didn't consider goal straight after either. They didn't consider goal straight after either. Thank you. I hope something happens this weekend to you guys and you guys try and moan No, about I hope we actually get a clean game. By the way, speaking, all of our clubs have been shafted other than one club. You know, the colour is blue and they're in Manchester, but we're not going to say who. No, that's not true. Their second goal against you was ruled out for touching the goalkeeper and it wasn't a foul. You're such a liar. You're actually lying right now, straight out of your teeth, and you nope. know it. Wasn't so it's foul. okay to end there, was the less contact, there was less contact on him than there was from the Newcastle player on Gabriel the, the game week prior, and yet it was given. And it was a slight little touch. The goalie wouldn't have probably caught it anyway. It wasn't a foul. It should have been a goal. Yeah, but that shouldn't have, so that shouldn't have been given. I've said that as well. Yeah. So therefore, I haven't changed my energy. So there, if you think that goal should have been given, they would have gone 2 0 up, they'd have beaten you. They ended up having a draw. No, no, no. Now. I'm saying that I'm saying the Arsenal goal shouldn't the Newcastle goal shouldn't have stood. Oh, okay. That okay, goal, okay. I appreciate that. that. Yeah, yeah. I, by the way, I defended Arsenal that week. I said the the Newcastle goal, the Arsenal goal, the, the Newcastle goal shouldn't have stood against Arsenal. I've mm. said that already. I've acknowledged that before. I get that. So yeah. So. What's happening this weekend, Hassan? You're hosting City. Who's back injury wise and, and, and how do you see the game playing out Sunday afternoon? This is the big game right here of the Premier League season. Everyone looks forward to it because it's actually entertaining, unlike when the other two play. So um, this Sunday right here, it's going to be it's going to be obviously the most difficult game of all year long. Um, I just want to say to the Arsenal fans, they need to stop running the unsustainable gimmick. It's literally March. There is literally way less of the season left to play than there is like le we've played, you know. It's it's like we've we've played like eight months. You cannot call a club unsustainable eight months into a season. Obviously, it's fucking sustainable. Um, I think Liverpool Football Club are in a must-win game situation. We have to beat Manchester City. Manchester City don't have to beat us. Um, draw would be best uh, best result best result for Arsenal uh, Football Club. I think this right here. Games like this is where the league is, is won and lost. I've seen it in the quad charge season two years ago when we did not beat Manchester City and we ended up losing the league by a point. My problem is people keep acting like statisticians and mathematicians and never actually look at the intangibles of a tight race. Sometimes in life, intangibles matter. The intangible is as follows. Momentum. Momentum is a thing in sport. If Manchester City beat Liverpool at Anfield, give them the league title and wrap it up because then they have gotten over a massive mental hurdle and there is literally no one that can stop them in the next 10 games. We're, we're just lying to each other if we say anyone's going to stop them. If Liverpool beat Manchester City, nothing is over because we're the massive underdog. We're the underdog to both the other clubs in the title race and we still have a long way to go with three competitions left for us as well. If this game ends in a draw, then Arsenal fans should be really happy because they're going to go top of the league. And to be honest with you, that's what I think is actually going to happen. I think uh, this game, I've never seen a game smell of a draw more than this game right here. Um, mm -hmm. If I want to speak using my, my heart and soul, obviously I want nothing more than a Liverpool win. I want a Liverpool victory always. I want my club to, to win all the games. Uh, however, I look at this game right here and if I'm being completely logical, it just smells of a draw. There are weaknesses both sides, um, defensively, specifically. Um, Manchester City come to Anfield and are favourites to beat us. But I think a draw is, is probably what's going to happen. I just see Liverpool on the counter-attack scoring goals. I just see Manchester City probably scoring goals with Liverpool maybe in a lower, deeper block. Or, you know, as the Arsenal fans like to say, mid-block. So when I see that happening, um, I, I, I think, I really do believe that this game ends in a draw. Because it just smells of it. This game smells of a draw. There's nothing, to be honest, to, 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 to just like... I could be very emotional and Liverpool biased about this and say we're going to win. But I just see a draw happening. Um, and I think if we do draw, then we are in a worse position than both other clubs because we have very tough fixtures left to play. Our squad is not strong enough to compete on all three fronts remaining. And this is why I think we'll end up uh, losing the league this season. But yeah, I hope we do win. I hope I get proven wrong, but I just don't see it happening this, this Sunday. Can you tell us who's back from injury from your team? If anyone is back. Konate was only precautionary, which is good news because we need him to play against uh, Haaland because people don't like this. But guys, in the Premier League, pace and power matters. It's not about technical ability all the time. Sometimes you need physicality. So we need we need Konate's physicality in the game. Um, I think I expect Gomez to be back. Sobosla is back. 
McAllister end on midfield. Salo played against part of Prague. Actually scored a completely fine goal. That was ruled offside. Nunez. Uh, I'll be honest with you that the absent players are Allison, Curtis Jones, uh, obviously Gravenberg, and uh, Josh Trent. Those are the players that are out. Trent as well. Yep. Yeah, but you, you've got to worry about Trent because you've you've got. I think Connor Bradley's better overall. Better. Not as good at crossing the ball. Defensively better. Better better with the ball at his feet. What what have you had in Birmingham? Can you tell me? A great couple of days. Yes, I could tell because you are just you said, waffling. Did you the, say the Bradley's better than him with the ball? Yeah, Bradley's ball better. Than ball at his feet. I'm talking dribbling, uh, interplay, not crossing and passing, but better with the ball at his feet. Yeah, Bradley's better. I need to go get. I don't know. If, I don't. I don't know if I could agree with that. You think Watching. he's a bit of ball carrier? It's not so much. Yeah, a little bit. It's little things that he, he does his thing. Watch him when he's in confined spaces. And look, it's, it's, I don't know what the younger people will call it now. Like when I talk about technical ability, there's skills and silks and tricks. Great. But he's got this really good ability when he's in tight spaces to be able to shift his body, body shape and just get these little, little passes, little flick passes, little things out. He's, it's just, it's really beautiful to watch. And I think in the Premier League, it's a really important commodity to have. I think he's good with the ball at his feet. I think defensively for a, such a young man, so far, I've not seen him put a foot wrong. And he's so young and he's so fresh, but he just defends so More amazing. More anti-Trent than it is pro Bradley, no, by the way. By the way, Trent is, Trent is amazing. And I, if Trent's fit, I'll play Trent over him because what Trent does with the ball at his feet in terms of passing and playmaking is undeniably amazing. The point I'm really making, I'm being a little bit... Bradley's sort of, not even going to play this Sunday. You want to bet? Uh, listen, my, my view is this. I'm being a little comedic with it, but a little satire with it. But when you now have Trent out because you've got Connor Bradley, I don't think you've got anything to worry about. I, I just On think the defensive it's... side, yeah, but I think Trent playing Trent I mean, defense, that, that should be very Trent defensively this season. Name one. He's already Sorry. locked up. I haven't said it. I'm not saying he made mistakes, but does it just okay? So just because I think Connor Bradley is going to be an amazing defender, that doesn't mean I think Trent isn't a good defender. I just think defensively he's going to be better. Like I said, Trent's fit, he plays. Going to be, I, but I, we're talking about the right I, here. I, 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 but I think this is what I've said, Connor Bradley. Because you've got him now, if Trent's out injured, I don't think it's something to sweat about because Connor Bradley's that good. When both fit, Trent plays over him. Yes, 100%. But I think I, I'm praising Liverpool here. You've got two excellent right backs. I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. But by the way, I don't even think Bradley plays against City. I really don't. I'm not even waffling. Oops, I think I'm he's going to go, go. He's going to go Gomez right back, Robertson left back. He's going to go more defensive presence. He's going to okay. go Van Dyke and Konate. So I think he don't even play Bradley, to be honest with you. But so then what does Gomez offer you on the transition? Because that's how your game is going to be. Bradley, no, the thing no, about no, him, no, I think he's a little bit more electric. Sorry? No, I think Klopp is worried about Foden defensively. He's done, he done it last season. Yeah, but Foden's well. on, the, on the right. Foden isn't playing on the left. No, Bernardo Silva plays on the right. Foden's supposed to play on the left against us. Not true. Foden started against us on the right and he shifted in the second half That's to the left. That's against you, Staffy. That's not how he'll play well, against us. Call, so you scored. don't think Duck was going to play? Yeah, hang on a bit. Yeah, I was going to say, according to who scored, uh, Duck who's on the doubtful list and Grealish is out. So they're both out. They're, they're Foden will be on the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, I, that's you think you, think you would trust Doku in a game like this or Grealish? He ain't going to play either of them. He's going Foden and Bernardo. He's going all no out. Point playing, there's no point playing Grealish at all, ever. He just doesn't, he just doesn't do anything. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So happy, by the way, FYI, I didn't even know that Doku was a doubt for this game, and I still didn't put him in. Imagine, that's that's how confident I was. I, I just don't. This is not the game for Doku, I, Staffy. This isn't the game Staffy, for Doku. Staffy, how do you see the game going, bruv? Who's getting the W? You, you know what the issue is. There's so many ins and outs of when, with injuries that I actually don't know what eleven is going to go against what eleven. The only thing I'm going to go by is what I've seen in recent games. And Avi Salah is back, and you're on mute, Hassan. Hold that. Um, I, can give you, I can give you both teams right now if it helps you with your prediction. I'll dead ass give you both teams right now. Tell me who's That's out how... again from your team, Trent, and who? This is our starting 11 Kelleher, Gomez, Konate, Van Dyke, Robertson, Endo, McAllister, Sobislai, Salah, Nunez, Diaz. The Manchester City starting 11 is as follows Ederson, Walker, Stones, Diaz, Ake, De Bruyne. Rodri, Kovacic, on the left Foden, on the right Bernardo, up top Haaland. Both teams right there. I, I I dare you come back this Sunday and find one mistake. That's how sure I am. What's going to be the forfeit if you're wrong? 
There is no forfeit, brother. <laughs> no, no, did no you make confident? Uh, no, I'm listen, I've already made too many, too many forfeits. I'm not going to make another one. Yeah, yeah, he made one saying if Jabi goes to United, he's going to shave his whole head. So, yes, uh, including his beard. So I would love to if see you, that. Okay, we'll make it, we'll, we'll do it fair. If you get there, if those starting ups are right, I'll do next week's show in a Liverpool kit. If you're wrong, you've got to do it in a Man United one. I don't have a Man United shirt. We'll, we'll get one sent to you. <laughs> yes, that's it. No, no, I don't take that. I don't See, you ain't confident then. I'm no, no, confident. I am. No, I am. I am confident. I'm just worried about the injury thing. Oh, I, oh, yeah, but yeah, the Bellingham so, thing is still. Who, who, um, do, still who do you see? Who do you see winning? Who do you see winning? Uh, uh, Staffy, Ben Hag thing. You know what it is. Liverpool are at home, and for all the footballing reasons, I think Liverpool should lose because they don't play as sustainable as City do. Um, they have a little bit more injuries than City do, but they're going to win. They're always going to find a way to win. And this is where I'm struggling here. I'm struggling to go with logic or by, you know, how do I say this? When you look at Liverpool all season, they haven't been scintillating every game, but they were lost like what? Two games all season, the Premier League, including the, the Spurs one that had so many question marks on it. How can I go against them when they're at home? When uh, this is uh, club's last um, Manchester City Liverpool derby, even though it's not a derby at home, the, the occasion is too big, and I feel like at the end of the day they're gonna get the win. But trying to break it down in a footballing way, I think City are gonna keep a lot of the ball, like we see them do against everyone. Definitely not as much as they kept against us, but they'll keep a lot of the ball. But they are one of the worst defenses when it comes to transition, and we've seen it game in game out. They're arguably going against the best transition team in the league. I don't know the facts, but I'm going to put them up there anyways. Salah's back. Nunes is back. You're going against a team that thrives off chaos, chaotic football. And that's the way that can beat City. City always lose, loses in chaotic ways. And you're going to the, the, the best team to do that. You know, when, when, when you defend and you win the ball, obviously they're going to defend much better than anyone else does because they have Van Dijk and Konate in the back. But when you win the ball, and you're quick on the transition, and you have McAllister, who's consistently trying to find Nunes. Nunes, who refuses to score any tap-ins, but is going to score a worldie out of nowhere every time. He, this guy just hates tap-ins, but give him the ball and he'll do something. And you have it's Salah two back. incredible goals yesterday. That's well. what I'm saying, bro. This guy, he hates tap-ins. He just scores good goals. And then you have Salah, obviously, who's back. There's so many reasons why Liverpool, if they say, stay resilient... If you Honestly. stay defensively resilient, you could win this game. Salabar. And I'm not going to lie, Holland looked like shit last game against United. Now he's going against Van Dijk and Konate. No disrespect. The only reason he got a goal was because Amrabat just had a brain fart, him and Casemiro. That's the only reason why he had a goal. He did nothing in this that's game. He actually missed it. That's not disrespect. No, well, that's what I'm saying. But, but you know City fans are going to cry. They're going to be like, oh, go look at yeah, your they're team. All sick. Anyway, they're all big that's always up. their argument. Every time I say I'm something, yeah, but your team is in sick. That's what I'm trying to say. I, I don't think he's going to be a factor in the game, if I'm being honest, and I'm going to predict it now. I don't think Haaland is going to have any presence versus Liverpool. So that's one player that they're going to shut down. It's just about the transition for me. Do I trust Liverpool to do it? To be honest, I do. You know, But at the end of the day, listen, if, if, if City find their shooting boots earlier and De Bruyne doesn't have a stinker like he did against us, that could be a completely different game. I know it sounds like I'm sitting on the fence, but I'm really trying to give both teams the respect that they deserve because I actually see the the game going both ways. It's De Bruyne Arsenal to me. Fans are going to be the happiest this weekend. Of course, because way. it's a win-win situation for them. Someone is dropping points. So it's a win-win situation for them. I yeah. honestly, listen, I, I'm, I'm going to go for a prediction. I'm not going to do a sad and just sit here and tell you what's supposed to happen and not give you something. I think I, I think the Liverpool are going to win. <laughs> now, that's what Sad does. You know, if you ever notice, Sad comes on this channel. And he say we're supposed to win. The it's the 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 skies. The the sun is supposed to shine today. Uh, the cloud is supposed to rain today. He's always going to tell you what's supposed to happen. He's never going to give you a prediction. I'm go, I'm just trying to analyze, and then I'll give you what I think is going to. I think Liverpool are going to win it. I think they'll defend well. I think they'll they'll <laughs> eliminate Haaland from the game. If they manage to keep that midfield quiet because of De Bruyne, which I think McAllister could do a job and Endo could do a job on on on, uh, on De Bruyne, I think if they, they, they plays, though, it all goes out the window. Just just would like to make this instead clear. of Konate. But I thought you told me it was precautionary. Yeah, yeah, it is precautionary. I'm just saying if Ooh. if if Kwanza plays, we're losing, and then I think 100 percent you need Konate in this game because it changes a I lot. Agree. Because I'm yeah. not not for nothing. We saw Johnny Evans and and Varane do a job on Holland and they kept them they kept them quiet. 
Konati to me is a better box defender than Van Dijk. Not because Van Dijk is not a good defender, it's because I feel like he gets involved in more duels, which allows Van Dijk to do the the, the thing. Like when you look at it, he's more of the like the guy patrolling, and Konati is the one that really engages. He's the rash one, and I think you need that type of defender versus Haaland. You need someone who who is not reactive, but someone who's proactive, and that's why people that people don't like that. the pace and power stuff. But it's true. You but. you need that on Haaland because what is Haaland? Haaland is a pace and power player, so you need yeah, someone 100%. to eliminate one hundred percent. One hundred percent. It's interesting though because I'm hearing here Liverpool win or or, or a draw prediction wise, and that's what a lot of people are going with. If City don't win, they're out of the title race for me, no, and I don't no. mean mathematically. I don't mean mathematically. Of course they're not. If they don't win, Arsenal are going to beat Brentford this weekend. I think we're going to get on to that. If they nope. drop points... Okay, I'm giving you my opinion first. He said nope to your opinion. That's crazy. Let nope. the guys speak, bro. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll, we'll unpack that one in a minute. We'll, we'll, we'll pull it aside. Arsenal are going to go ahead of them if they draw or lose this weekend. Liverpool will obviously stay ahead of them or go three points further ahead. Arsenal are going to win, in my opinion, at the Etihad as well. If, if City drop points this weekend, because they're already, then they have to win because it's two teams that could pull clear of them. They're going to press up higher. They're going to leave themselves exposed to those counterattacks. Man United had 10 opportunities on the counterattack. We, we screwed up most of them, didn't even get shots. Arsenal, by the way, Liverpool this weekend as well will cut them to ribbons if they play like that. So if City if City win today, I think they're going to, to this weekend, sorry, I think they're going to win the league. I think this game is so pivotal because psychologically within a space of two games, they could find themselves anywhere between four to six points off of the top. Then they've got to leapfrog two teams. And as great as City are, I don't think they'll do that with 10 or so, uh, nine games to go. So City must win. It's, and by the way, this is not mathematically factual. This is my opinion for anyone who's crying. I think if City foul to win this weekend, they will not win the league. That's okay, let view. me just say this. First of all, if City win this weekend, they win the league. They're, if if City, if genuinely, if City beat us at Anfield, I'm doing a video titled "Congratulations, Man City." I'm giving up 100. We're not. We're not going to recover shit. It's over. It's 100 over. If City beat us at Anfield, there's no one stopping them from at the end of the season. If it's a draw, then it's game It's it's game on for all three clubs. Nothing has changed. If Liverpool win, then nothing has changed either because City could win 10 in a row. Liverpool are not capable as current constructive of winning 10 in a row. And I don't think, uh, you know, and I think we're less likely to win 10 in a row than Arsenal to begin with. So for me, Liverpool are, are the least Arsenal, likely. Even with the win, even with us beating City at Anfield, Liverpool are still the least likely to win the Premier League. Where the where the 100% the underdogs and all this, Arsenal have a stronger defense. Uh, City uh, are just more balanced than us. Have a strong, way stronger midfield and 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 a stronger uh, defense as well than us. So, yeah, I think obviously, for me, um, I want us to win. Uh, but I'm just saying, in all three scenarios, Liverpool cannot, uh, you know, basically confirm a league title this Sunday. I think City can. Because momentum with City is different. I'll explain, I'll explain to you what I mean. If City win at Anfield, they've overcome another hurdle. Now, in the last 10 games, no one's stopping them after that. Because City, because City could just win 10 in a row. We can't win 10 in a row. We don't have the, capability, the capabilities to win 10 in a row. I wish I believed it, but I just don't. So I don't think we can win a 10 row because we don't have a Fabinho. We don't have a Mane. We don't have a Firmino. We don't have, you know, a prime Matip. We don't have a prime VVD. Allison's not there. Trent's not there. Prime Robertson ain't there. So this is a completely different team. This is a rebuild. This is like, you know, I know Stafford will get this reference. You know, when the Warriors won, won the NBA title against the Celtics, like two years ago, when it wasn't like the KD Warriors, you know, this was like the rebuild Warriors. This is the rebuild Liverpool right here. So this is why I'm, I'm saying we're the least likely to win it. So until it happens, I won't believe it. So for me... Liverpool are, even with a win, so let's say Liverpool beat City on Sunday, we're still least likely to win the league. Honestly. I understand that, but, but I didn't. I haven't said who would win the league. I've just said I think if City don't win this weekend, they won't win it. And that's because... How? I think, how? Based on what? Because they could win on, 10 in a row. But they, they can't if they don't win the next two games. I don't think they'll... If they drop points against you, I think that they will then drop points against Arsenal. There's only eight. There's only nine games left, so they cannot win 10 on the bounce. 
<laughs> no, no, I'm, t- no, I'm saying this game. Okay, so you're including Arsenal. I'm saying that the game, if if they drop points against us, they could still win the league because they could they have the capability of winning the ten in a row. Oh, and look, and okay. they're the least likely to drop well, they, points. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they 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 could, but this is what I I feel will happen. Of course, they could win it. To say, I'm just giving you my opinion on what I think will happen, rather than, and I'm I'm not going to do a sard. And we know they could still win it, but for me, if they drop points against you, I think they're going to overextend themselves against Arsenal. You'll win again. Arsenal beat them, and then what will the gap be? The gap between you and them is going to be somewhere like seven points. And then the gap between them and Arsenal will be four points. I don't see them leapfrogging two two teams in the last nine games. I just so you're saying isn't... Arsenal win it basically. No, you or Arsenal will, will, will then have a chance. I don't know between the two of you yet, but remember, if Arsenal win this week, you start winning games on the bounce. If Arsenal beat Brentford tomorrow, that will be their eighth Premier League win on the bounce. Number nine is again, you know, City. They beat City. They're winning their game after, by the way. They're at home to Luton, so. The team that's on that run, they're on a great run. But you said earlier that Arsenal are not going to beat Brentford. Unpack that. Why are Arsenal not beating Brentford? You know, I realized something. Sometimes you have to do a bit more research. My problem is sometimes I'm not very research data based. You know, sometimes I need you're more a waffler data. is what you're saying. No, I'm not a waffler. I speak yeah. facts. This is why I'm on straight facts. Like subscribe. Um, you know what it is? I realized that Ramsdale is playing this game. It's not going to be David Raya. I, I, and I just could smell it. You know what? You could smell something. I just, I genuinely just smell it. I honestly just smell it. The waffle I you could just smell. imagine 30 seconds in, just like against Southampton last season, Ramsdale passes it to Ivan Tony, and then Ivan Tony slots it in, and then it's just 1 0 to Brentford at the Emirates. And then the Brentford fans start singing, You're just a shit, David Raya. Shit, David Raya. It's going to be so beautiful. Honestly, I'll, I'll, I'll be real with you. I just think Arsenal are drawing at home to Brentford just because of Ramsdale. There is literally, it's, it's genuinely, you want to, to hear my logic? Aaron Ramsdale, that's my logic. He ain't, play, he ain't played a game in, in like forever. This is probably going to be his last game in an Arsenal shirt. I'll be honest with you. I really think Ramsdale is going to be the reason why Arsenal drop points this weekend. And you know what's what's Ramsdale's weakness? You know, let's let's go data data based analysis, Staffy. Uh, you know what's Ramsdale's weakness? Crosses. Why accent and say my name. You know, you know, you know, you know what Brentford do well? Crosses. That's that's all Brentford do. Brentford are the biggest crossing merchants in this whole league. So. Yeah, but, yeah but... Brentford are, are getting a draw at, at, at the Emirates. And honestly, I'm being dead serious. It's just because Ramsdale is playing. There is honestly no other reason other than Ramsdale playing. I could just sense him bottling it right now. Listen, there's nothing that you said about this take so far that's been factual. It's all your opinion. So it's crazy that you said all that after you said I only speak facts. But not a single fact was said on that monologue. And uh, l- let me tell you something. This team Name one thing you've 15. said in your life that's a fact. Name one oh, thing right now. I, so every time I say something, they call me a tactical, a stat merchant. Come on. I'll give you a fact, Sam. Man United have more league titles than you. <laughs> I give you a fact. You got six Champions Leagues. That's I didn't fact, ask right. for a fact. I didn't ask for one. <laughs> did. Yeah, I didn't ask you, you for a fact that. either. No, 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 you asked me for a fact. Didn't ask. Happy <laughs> for a fact. <laughs> didn't ask. But anyways, exactly. listen. I, I think I think you want that to happen, which is fine. It's fair. It's fair for all of us to have all these ambitions and, and dreams and all that stuff. But none of that is going to happen. Brentford have been horrendous in recent games. Like, I'm just looking at their recent games right now, bro. A, a draw to Chelsea, a loss to, 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 uh, to West Ham. Well, West you know, Ham all that goes out in Derby. All that goes out in Derby. Come on, stop. That's don't, the Ivan Tony Derby right there. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't disrespect us. <laughs> like, listen, listen. <laughs> You're doing what I usually do, which is rattle Arsenal fans. But now you're rattling them. I, I thought I was supposed to be the Spurs fan. But Ivan Tony Darby stuff. You know it's true. You know bro, it's true. Bro, Ivan Tony's been struggling too. The whole team has been struggling. And I think they're absolutely going to get pumped uh, by, by Arsenal tomorrow. There's no chance any of what you're saying is going to happen. I mean, it, there is a chance. Don't get me wrong. But what is the likelihood for any of that to happen? They're struggling. They're sitting in 15th. I mean... Are they even, bro? Are they even off uh, 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 the uh, the relegation, um, the relegation battle? They're only six, just six points ahead of 18th. 
you know, they're not doing well, bro. And and Arsenal have been absolutely flying. Bar that Porto loss, they've been absolutely flying. In the league, they've been killing them. Listen, I understand that the the things that you're saying about um, Rams, though, but it's not like any of the goalkeepers have been doing that much of a job for Arsenal lately anyways. They're putting five, six, and, and all these numbers past all these teams in the last, what, four games? So it's not like he's going to have to do anything anyways. I think this Brentford team is, is one of the worst Brentford teams we've seen in the past, what, they've been in the league for, what, three years now? And they've been actually a decent team when you look at Tony and Wissa and all that. At the end of the day, they could get a result. They're always that team that could be potential a potential banana slip for anyone, mm. but not against this current Arsenal team. This current Arsenal team knows they're going to win and sit there with three points and watch your game on the weekend, relax and see who's going to who's gonna um, mm. pick up points or not. I don't think there's any logical reason to say that Arsenal are going to slip other than us just wanting the band to they've Arsenal. Won, they've won three games away from home. All year, Brentford. One of them was against Chelsea earlier on in the season. They beat Fulham on the opening day when Fulham had a man sent off. And they did beat Wolves away, which is a good result. They lose all the others. They are get no disrespect. A lot lot they are get, they are getting Brentford this weekend, 5:30, are getting pumped. And I was gonna tell a joke then that involved KJ getting married. And I thought, no, I'll allow it. But he they are getting pumped, brother. Now you gotta are, say it. No, no, I can't. No, I can't. no, 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 Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say no, it. No, I can't. <laughs> Off camera, I'll tell you that joke. Like, Brentford are getting pumped this weekend. This, this Arsenal team, I, and I know that rival, I, I get so much crap whenever I praise Arsenal. People go, why do they keep getting discussed? Well, they're in the title race. The title race is one of the biggest conversations. That's, they, like, every time the title race is debated, which will be weekly, they're going to be mentioned. They're unstoppable right now. I think they'll be Brentford this weekend. And if City drop points to Liverpool on Sunday, they win at the Etihad as well. I re- they're that good at the moment. But that's Arsenal. what I wanted to ask him, Terry, because he said, if City win, I want to go back to that point that he made earlier. Well, he then. said, if City win, I'm making a video where I'm saying, congrats, City. Why are you dismissing Arsenal? Why are you saying, if we can't be... If, this is what doesn't make sense. You think Arsenal are better than you, but you're saying, if you can't beat City, then neither will Arsenal. That's and, and the logic answer, doesn't make sense. And before you answer the question, all year you've predicted Arsenal winning it. What's changed your mind? No, I'm saying if City win at Anfield, there's an if. Why don't you guys include caveats? Can you please stop misquoting me? I no, said no, if City win at no, Anfield. No, that's not, that's, that's not doing that. It, Staffy has just said, right, let's say City win. You said they win the league. He's asking yeah. why are you discounting Arsenal? Okay, th- Okay, I'll tell you why. If City yeah. win uh, at, at Anfield versus Liverpool, then I generally don't believe there is any mental block or hurdle left till the end of the season. It's just it's just business. Business as usual. Ten, ten, they're going to win 10 in a row. They're actually not going to lose any yeah, games. But, but, but that doesn't mean that Arsenal are not going to beat them because of mental reasons. They could beat them for footballing reasons. So that's what I'm saying. Why are you discounting Arsenal? Bro, you know Arsenal lose? are just City light anyway. Don't do that. I, I don't do that. That's why I'm asking you questions. They they are going to the, 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 the Why are you dismissing Arsenal if you guys can't? I'm not dismissing done? Arsenal. I said Liverpool are the least likely to win the league. So if if I believe City don't win it, Arsenal win it. What I'm saying is City under Pep Guardiola have not beaten Liverpool at Anfield. They haven't. So if they do beat us at Anfield, that's the biggest one of the biggest mental blocks that they've had to overcome. If they overcome that mental block. It gets to the stage where they just get to an unstoppable level where it's just win, 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 win. That's what I'm saying. So it's okay. not about dismissing but, Arsenal. It's about saying City then would become unstoppable. You get it? Okay, so okay, so let me ask you this because I could use the same logic. This season, Arsenal have beaten City twice. One in, the, one in the community shield and one in the league. I don't care for the context of how it happened. I'm just going by that. If you want to talk about mental hurdles, that is a mental hurdle that, that got over. Now, if they beat City at the Etihad, that's, that's them sweeping them all season. That's three wins. I can use the same logic. It'd be like, you know what? Arsenal, early in the season, got over that mental hurdle. That's why I think they're going to go to the Etihad and win. So that's what I'm saying. If you're going to yeah, use no, the yeah, mental aspect for City... Quality. That's a but good what, point. Exactly. Well, that's why I wanted to know why you completely dismissed it. You think... City getting over that mental hurdle of beating you. No, you're doing that, but you technically did that. Like, like, listen to me. Listen to the words I'm saying. You said if City, City beat you guys since 2022 December. Yeah, yeah Habibi, listen, listen. It's you 2024. Say if, 
Are you going to listen? Because I don't think you're that's noticing. Disingenuous, what you're that's disingenuous. You make it sound like two years. That was last season, mate. <laughs> and that's uh, factually 2022 2024 yeah but years. you're making it but you're being very clever with the numbers make it sound like two years it was last season they lost at home i don't know it was, but but in the last year have city been leaking counter-attack opportunities like they've been doing in recent weeks and months have we been like leaking counter-attack opportunities i'm talking about city we have been as well mm. Okay, okay. Let me, let me let me ask it this way. And that's, I mean, and that's why Arsenal beat, and that's why Arsenal beat you, and that's why I think Arsenal will beat them. They, they you actually think Arsenal is going to go to the Etihad and win? No, no. That's what I want to ask you. What do you think? Because you keep saying I didn't dismiss them, but you said they're going to win ten games in a row, so you technically are dismissing them. Now let me ask you this: If they beat, do you think beat Arsenal can beat City at their home, at their ground? Okay, let me give you three scenarios. If City beat <laughs> Liverpool at Anfield, three. City win the league, Arsenal finish second. If we beat City at Anfield, Arsenal win the league, City finish second. If it's a draw, Arsenal win the league and City finish second. That's that's the. the but did, but did, did you see what you just did over here? Because you keep saying I didn't dismiss them, but all your predictions are based on what happens this weekend. You keep making your predictions for the future based on if you beat City this weekend or not. So if we beat them, yeah, then Arsenal can beat them. If we lose to them, no way Arsenal can beat them. But you keep saying you're not dismissing them. You yeah, are yeah, yeah. I, I, dismissing because, them. because there's something you don't understand. I have been in a title race with this team. You haven't been. You do, you, you <laughs> haven't it's not me, it. it's Arsenal. You haven't <laughs> felt it. You, okay, you haven't felt it from like an emotional, mental perspective. City, March onwards, are not the team you want to play because they turn on a switch that you have not seen before. It's it's literally like, you know, you know you, you grew up watching basketball and shit. It's like the the early 2000s Lakers. It's just switch on in the playoffs. I grew it's up in Egypt. Thing. I didn't watch basketball. This so is, let's this put is, this narrative away. Okay, this is, like, this is like, you know, African Champions League Al-Ahli. Happy now? So it's like, Basically, they switch a gear that you just haven't seen out of them before. When have so you seen March Arsenal on... pump players, uh, 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 pump teams like this? Six Arsenal nil, is, six Arsenal one, five like nil. A... Arsenal is like a smiley. It's different. Oh, that's <laughs> so disrespectful. It's different. It's not disrespectful at all. How does Sir, it go? Let me tell you this. this team... That's how it no, goes. No, no, no. That, that's, that's so, that? that's that? so disrespectful. That? Terry, what he just said, he just compared them to Egyptian team that are in a very poor state and they they always are known for one thing, producing very good players, but they're a selling team. But they always play good football and they just sell their best players. Where did just make that go? Comp- Where did Van What does that have to do with what's happening Where this did season? Thierry Henry go? You are so disingenuous. It's actually crazy. It's actually crazy. Brother, your question, my, my three scenarios, all invo- two of them involve Arsenal possibly winning the league. How, yeah, how but all of them, decision? all of them rely on you first. It's I'm basically, dismissing Liverpool, if anything. That's why you know I'm what dismissing. you're you know what you're saying. You're saying it's like it's like if you're saying, Oh, if I can't beat Terry in a fight, then Stavi can't beat him in a fight. But if I can beat Terry in a fight, then maybe Stavi can beat him in a fight. Why does okay, Alex, be okay, so I'm glad you by the way, by the way, by the way, neither of you could beat me in a fight. I just want to make sure that's I, I could beat you in wrestling. I would beat you in wrestling. 100%. I'm not cuddling another man. I'm no, that's not like that. Jesus. wrestling is not cuddling when you're getting. I, I know. I, I've done MMA, mate. I, I know it's hard. Yes, wrestling is. But, but I'd rock your jaw so hard, brother. <laughs> probably you're probably a better boxer. But anyway, um, anyway, when it comes to, I'm so glad you mentioned the fighting example, right? Perfect example. Imagine Terry has a mental hurdle against me. Okay, I am fighting you next, so it's gonna be me versus Staffy. In May, but I'm fighting Terry right now. Okay, if he has a mental hurdle against me, and he beats me, it's normal for me to think that Terry is going to go on to beat Staffy and become world champion. So that's that's my logic. My logic is very simple. You're not understanding my logic. City, if it's they win simple. this game, <laughs> no, no, it's it's very right. logical, Terry. You're a fraud today. You've been very fraudulent today, <laughs> Professor Terry over here. Here's the <laughs> they switch gears. They switch gears. So now City become fourth gear, fifth gear. City in fourth gear, fifth gear are unstoppable. I hear what you're saying, by the way. I just don't agree with it. And I'm just trying to show you the flaws in your argument. 
Because yes. as much as you're saying all this, by I'm the way, this is your opinion. Opinion. Just, just no, no, don't I, patronize him. I, I'm just saying all you're saying is is opinion based, and I'm not gonna dismiss opinion your opinion based. because it's very listen, it's 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 what you're saying is not insane, like it actually could happen. The thing that I'm trying to call you out for is that I don't think any of this involves how good or bad Arsenal could be when they face City. Because as much as you want to sit here and you say, Oh, but I've seen this city team when they turn up a gear or two. Well, I haven't seen Arsenal behave like this, like they were in the in the past few weeks. When is even last year when Arsenal were winning a lot of games? I don't remember one run where every team before the game started knew they were about to concede at least three, four goals. I sat here, by the way, and this is how much I'm comfortable with this. Sir, you know, I do a weekly show on Hassan's channel. I predicted six no Arsenal last week and they laughed. And guess who's the only one who got the right prediction? For me to sit here and actually predict the team to win, win for it's someone to win. For yeah, someone to win 6-0, like get, get over yourself. Get over like. yourself. Get over yourself. You're going to get Watch fired us. soon. I'm telling you right now. going to get you fired. Well, I can't get fired <laughs> if I'm not getting paid. Anyways. <laughs> I can't get fired at a place that I'm not getting paid. I'm technically right volunteering. But listen, for me to even sit there and predict someone to win 6-0 with a straight face, not joking about it, it shows you how good this team has been. So I can make the same case for Arsenal saying the way Arsenal have been behaving is like something we haven't seen from them under Arteta or just in general. So both cases could cancel out each other. I, I'm just going to wrap it up with this. Arsenal fans, first of all, this is the most I've ever defended you. So I bet I, I better never hear that I'm a Spurs twerker again on straight facts. You are a Spurs twerker. Secondly, You're a secondly, Spurs secondly, twerker. secondly, you secondly, are the biggest Spurs secondly, twerker on the football Secondly, let me finish. I've let far. me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> secondly, secondly, I'm just saying, no matter what happens on this weekend, whether Liverpool win, City win, or they draw, that will have zero impact, in my opinion, on how Arsenal approach the game. Because I could see this game going in any way. I could see City winning against you 6-0. But I could still see a way that Arsenal could go to, to the internet and actually pick up a result. So I'm just okay, dismissing an anything, question? any association, this game with the one that okay. they have when they face them. Okay, can I ask you a genuine question right now? So, so honest question. Terry just said what? Arsenal have won eight in a row in the Prem, right, Terry? Yes. Eight wins in a row? Yes. Eight wins in a row. If Arsenal want to win this league, essentially what Staff is saying, they must go perfect from now to the end of the season. Regardless of the result, if they win 19 in a row, they have broken a Premier League record. But they I have see won, that, by the way. They have when won more in that? a row than City and more in a row than. No, 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 because you need to understand something. Arsenal are behind. Arsenal are behind right now, right? So, in order for them to climb ahead, they need to beat no, City I, at the Etihad and win their games. But I also think, I, also, I think, I, but I think all, t all of you, I think all three of you in the next 11 games, are going to drop points in at least three matches. I think all of you will drop points between in two to three matches. I I don't I don't think anyone at this point has to win every single one of their remaining games games to win it. The scenario is different. It's not a two horse race. I think you view. I think it again. You don't you don't know what it's like. Me and Staffy have got this experience of watching your team in a, a race where there's more than two teams. It's a different psychological battle. You've also got a lot of teams below you this season: Villas, Tottenham's. I'm going to have a say in this. Even Man United, you've got to come to Old, old Trafford. No, we've got to, we go Anfield, right? No, we come no, to Old Trafford. You come they to Old Trafford. Trafford. I know we're not good at the moment. But we, we got know something for games, them, I'll tell you that. Those games can be a, an equaliser. Arsenal come to Old Trafford. All of you have got to play Tottenham, who are a great transition team under Anas Postacoglu. All of you have got to play Aston Villa again. I think you go to Villa Park. Villa go to the Etihad to be fair, but susceptible in the counter attacks, and Arsenal have got to host them. I just, I, I genuinely believe that City will drop points in at least three games. Liverpool will do it in at least three games, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if Arsenal did as well. It just depends whether it's draws or defeats. You know, you might, you know, the team that probably, and that's it sounds, sounds like such a dumb thing to say out loud. You've just got to try and make those non-wins draws. Because I think someone's going to win this league by a point or two, maybe even goal difference this year. It might be goal goals. difference, Terry. Exactly, hundred percent. And which is, by, by the way, I just want to correct you one thing before we move on. I never said they need to win every game to win the league because eventually they will drop points. But they do if they win their next three, which is leading up to the city game, they will go first place. So it's not like they need someone to do or get a result for them to to go ahead of city. 
it, it, let's say City beat you guys. They went against Brentford. I think they'll beat Chelsea as well. And then if they beat City, they go ahead of them regardless of what happens in, 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 in any other games. Which is why I'm saying, it's first of all, it's too early to even say they're going to win every game. Because what if they get hit with an injury? You don't know what's going to happen. You know, so players out of nowhere could get injured for any team. But it's so, like... It, it has nothing to do, again, with, with, which is what I've been trying to say all day, has nothing to do with the game that's coming up in about two weeks, two, three weeks. I don't I don't know when it is. So I'm I'm, 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 I'm just trying to say Arsenal are not associated with anything else that's going to happen with this week in, in, in your game. Let's have a look at some of the super chats that have come in here. There's been quite a few of them. First one says, uh, is Hassam a giant or is or is that really a small mug? I'm six one to be fair, so it's not a small. Can you hold thing. the mug again? Do you have kawaii hands? <laughs> it it, it, it does look like a small one. Uh, yes, Staffy, more validation, please. Come on, you gooners. <laughs> oh, the also fans, listen, the also fans are gonna go to the bar tonight. They're gonna like, yo, did you hear what Staffy said about us in straight facts? And they're gonna start <laughs> blushing and shit. Uh, Sam, you uh, you're, like, no, Sam, you're a G, it. but tr- but saying City have a mental block against Liverpool Anfield as if it matters. Uh, they have won six out of seven titles, mate. Six out of eight, uh, the manager's been there for. Uh, come on, you gooners, though. Big up, tell. I mean, yes. they, it's they matters in context, I swear, they vote, City have only won twice in 25 years at Anfield. I mean, that's a mad record. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, get, get me on the stream. Let me cook her, Sam. We'll get you on soon, my bro. Uh, match reaction Sunday. I want you there, my brother. I'll be sending you the link. Uh, where did Rice go? Where did Rice go? I don't know what that's in relation to. He Is there any or... like Declan Rice news that we don't know about? I don't know. It's Man United news. We're... Big planning committee's been put together to build a new stadium. Seb Co. Do you guys know who Sebastian Co. Is? Runs athletics and stuff. He's like he's an old runner in England. He's 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 a well known guy. Put London twenty twelve together and stuff. But looks like a brand new ninety thousand plus seat stadiums coming our way. Go on, love it. Bigger than everybody else's. No more piss Good. bucket. No more people that were crying about the old stadium. No now I'm, I'm I'm happy by that because I'm, I'm tired of people clinging on to 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 old stuff like we can't move on. Do you know what? Do you know, what do you know what I would say is this right? It's going to be built. I understand moving location. I, w- I wouldn't agree like that. But if you n- essentially knock down every part of the new stadium, the current stadium, and rebuild new stands, the new stadium anyway, right? It's going to look completely different. Like I'm looking to get an extension done on my house, and the architect's come back, and he's basically said, you're better off buying a new house. I said, why? He said, well, what you want done, we've basically got to knock the whole house down and build it again. It's, too, it's, it's ridiculously expensive for what you want. So I wouldn't be getting an extension. I'd be building a new house. So what I'm better off doing is just building a new house on a bit of land somewhere. Does that make sense? And that's the situation Man United are in. If they want to make the club state it's state of the art, it won't look anything like it does now. The whole inside will change anyway. So just build it next to it. It's, it's the same. It, honestly, it's the same difference. I think people are deep in it too much, personally. Uh, fans like Hassam, who needs rivals? Jeez, uh, is what LA Religion says here. No problem, no problem. Just come back and say the same shit I said in May. Uh, Hammy says, Hassam is talking so much rubbish. Uh, inshallah, uh, he will uh, correct the habit in Ramadan. Once again, no worries, brother. I don't know who you support, but just come back and say everything I've said just two months later. It's just I don't think Ramadan. I don't think Ramadan. Same shit they said about Chelsea. I said the Arsenal are going to win the league from the start of the year. I said our squad depth is the reason why we'll fail. I've said all. I've, I've, I'm, I'm standing on business, bro. We'll see who was right in me. Uh, what is this guy talking about? Arsenal um, was just uh, in a race with City last year, and they have learned from it. No problem. I haven't said anything against that. Hold him accountable for his own consistencies. Thank you very is much. Is that related Rob. to Rice? I think Rice has been consistent. Oh, I think he's talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. By the way, whole starting Brentford back four is out. Oh yeah, they're getting they're getting absolutely pumped. They're getting pumped. Honestly, even if they're available, do you really trust that they were going to do anything? No, is right. Re- is Regulon really gonna stop Saka, bro? Come on, bro. Let's. let's they are getting. 
Pump and dump. Stop it, Sam. You're shameless. Uh, big up the football terrace community and panel. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, yes, the community is amazing. Best in the business. Uh, Sam had to put on, sorry, put it on Ramsdale. Can't point out one Arsenal weakness um, as though the Arsenal coaching bench has not put all that into consideration. That's what I said. I actually said, he said, I'm going to speak facts, but said nothing factual. Bro, putting Ramsdale on the screen is not a fact. What, what, what does that mean? So what Probably. if Ramsdale has a world-class game? What, what are you going to do? Are then it's like, going oh, yeah. to put them in the next game because they're going to ask who should start Ramsdale or No, Ramsdale. they're not. Stop doing that. You know, Raya's not going anywhere. If it wasn't okay, for the, Arsenal for the fans, Lodge, you're going to win every single game from now to the end of the year. Yeah, look what this guy does, bro. He, no he, one said he, that. You, you can never you can never that's stay down there. That's my response from now on. Khalas, Arsenal gonna we're give it we're not asking you to go from one extreme to the other. That's what I do. I'm an extremist. I'm sensationalist. <laughs> don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> don't say that, <laughs> don't say that bro. On the internet. Like... <laughs> He's an extremist football fan. He loves yes. his team too much. That's what he meant to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Hassam uh, had to put it uh, on oh sorry we've done that one there uh, Arsenal versus Brentford uh, at the Emirates uh, let's just hope the idiots in VAR draw the line this time I hope Rambo isn't bird watching uh, and gets a clean sheet see uh, Sam, if you said if you said there's pigeons on the pitch then that would have been a fact I'd be like you know what he does get distracted that's like looking at birds yeah <laughs> but Charles Charles is, uh, away at Villa to be fair uh, Arsenal beating us at home. Terry stopped waffling. Well, that's not that's not a rebuttal, is it? When people say you're waffling, that typically means shit is a good point. And I can't rebuttal it. I think if you lose or drop points to Liverpool, you're going to overextend because you have to win, and they're going to rip you apart in a counter attack. Thanos, uh, you know I know the exact type of fan you are. I know the exact type of fan you are, and you're just this new era cringy City fan who just is sexually attracted to trophies, who just wanks off to Premier League pictures every night. You're just that type of guy. You wow. can't have normal football conversations. You are an extremist. Big up <laughs> to you, though, for supporting the terrace and shit. Uh, Sam doing the underdog uh, gimmick like Hamza with City. Uh, don't be fooled. Don't fool, uh, can't fool me, pal. Uh, there you are. Hold that, uh, man. I'm not doing any underdog. It's the fact. Cross press conference didn't confirm Konate at all, Hassan. Oh, you've been I'm glad though there. people like you are enjoying the Europa League, Omar, though. Continue to enjoy it. Continue to act like it's a big trophy. I'll act, I, I cannot act along. I didn't celebrate a single goal yesterday. Big up. With structure, Southgate might be the best Man United manager. Thank you, Guna Carlos, but I'm going to politely disagree <laughs> with you, brother. Uh, cannot believe a drop ball scenario is spoken about like a goal scoring opportunity has been ruled out etc etc and compared to a legitimate goal ruled out against Tottenham wow amazing discussion topic it's a fair challenge it's a fair challenge but th th this is what I would say to you and it's holds water if the same thing had happened in reverse Liverpool fans would have been going absolutely crazy so the only time I I I'll come back and say yeah we were wrong to talk about it is if the similar thing happens to you and Liverpool fans say, nah, there was two minutes in between the bad decision. G genuinely, you know, it's, it's, it, it is what it is. So yeah, I, I, I just think there'd be a bit of hypocrisy there. This game is nowhere near, nowhere near to draw. City always come and Anfield with points. Um, come, comes, City always comes and filled with points, uh, but this time they need a win because Arsenal on their tail. Yeah, if Arsenal playing first, if they win, that, that really makes the, the game spicier. Hassan makes it sound like Liverpool are top of the table, but fighting relegation as well. Their underdog narrative, Binnett man, love the show. Thank you, Frankie. Frankie Fast Hands. Uh, United also gets the controversial goal by Casemiro. What controversial goal by Casemiro? We barely score goals, as you remember. <laughs> That's a very good point. I'm actually embarrassed that I don't remember. I actually don't know which goal he's talking about either. Oh, the one where they said Varane was offside. Different scenario. Varane was in oh, an offside position, on. but Varane didn't block a player that could have cleared it. Fundamentally different. Uh, bro, I, again, I said it, it before wasn't, and I said it, it again. It, it, it was, sorry, go on, mate. Now, I was going to say there was three players closer to the ball than Varane. That didn't get the ball. Logically, if the three players didn't get to the ball, why would Varane or the guy that he blocked get the ball? Because Varane blocked him and he didn't get the ball. And the three yeah. players in between didn't get him. 
So context matters here. Of course it does. Uh, you guys uh, think Liverpool win actually is better for Arsenal. Keeps Man City from gaining momentum. Yeah, I do. I do. Do you know what? I've seen Rory talks football say this. I I do think Liverpool, a draw is the best result for Arsenal. But a win for Liverpool, I don't think it's the end of the world still. Because I, I, I just, no, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I agree with but, you. I actually, I actually think, sorry, you were going to finish something. Yeah, go on, man. No, man. Go, go, go. Yeah, I was, was going to say, I agree. I would rather, if I was an Arsenal fan, I would rather Liverpool win than City. Because Liverpool at home anyways, the magnitude of a Liverpool win wouldn't be as as big as the magnitude of City going to Anfield and finally picking up a win because I forgot what Hassan said, how many wins they've had in, in the last few years, which is not a lot. And to be honest, I always look at Liverpool and Liverpool zero. Are, are... Zero? Okay, I didn't even know that. I thought it was like one or two. I think Liverpool's style of football is heavily reliant on individuals because mm-hmm. they're not more of a system team. So I think they're more prone to ever losing a game than City. Whereas City, when the system kicks in, it takes a while for them to slow down. So if I was an Arsenal fan, I would want either a Liverpool win or a draw. Yeah, I hear you. Sam, you complained about the Liverpool window and you complained about FSG, blah, blah, blah. Now you were talking out the other side of your mouth. It's funny because you're an Arsenal fan, so you have absolutely nothing to do with FSG or anything. You know what I don't understand about Arsenal fans? I generally don't get it. Like, I actually said Arsenal are going to win the league, and you're here moaning and bitching and sending super chats about me when I've said you're going to win the league. Uh, I, I, I you're, deeply you're apologize. Not, but you're not saying that anymore, are you? From the bottom of my heart for saying that, you know, Arsenal are going to win the league, but they're just going to drop points to, to Brentford. And I'm still FSG out. I tweeted FSG out when we were top of the league two months into the season. Ain't shit changed. I'm FSG out till till forever until they prove me wrong. So, yes, I'm, I'm FSG out and that has nothing to do with it. And I still don't think we're going to win the league. So how does that change anything you like I've said? <laughs> I love it. Boys, listen, absolute pleasure to speak football with you. We didn't get through all the subjects, but it is what it is. We're live again in 20 minutes, people. Wait, the no predictions show. there. Oh yeah, for oh for the yeah for the city for, yeah, for the city Liverpool game. Give us your predictions, boys. Yes. Sam Yella, go first. Two two. Look at this. Um, two one. Um, Liverpool. Same as me. I'm going two one Liverpool. I think Liverpool are going to win. I I think they'll get the win. But viewers, we'll see you on top six show in. 20 minutes time. This video will take you there. So go there now. Hit the like button over there. Make sure you're you're ready for that show. Really good panel tonight with... Who we got tonight? We've got Lewis on there. We've got Ram. We've got Egal. Kate's coming on. Have Hope is going to be there. It's a really, really good panel. We'll see you all over there very, very soon. Take care. Goodbye. God bless. Peace.